and you put a group of 15 people together and ask them to create a mascot to compete with the face of video games. Sonic the Hedgehog. Since his breakthrough in 1991, he's been responsible for some of the best and worst games the world has ever seen. Whether it's a handheld, console, or even PC, we left no stone unturned in an attempt to find the classics and the absolute failures. Hey, I'm Stuttering Craig. And I'm Handsome Tom. For Screw Attack's best and worst Sonic games. Number five. Ah, uh, the game that started it all has to be in the top five. The original Sonic was the signature game for the Genesis. A game so fast, Sega had to make up a fake marketing ploy. Wow, just look at all that animation. And blast processing, which makes him faster than ever. Before Knuckles, before Tails, before that weird alligator guy, there was just a hedgehog and an evil fat scientist who wanted to destroy the creatures of the forest. And it was awesome. Compared to what we were seeing on the NES at the time, Sega had every right to brag. Number four. While not all handheld Sonic games have been that great, we gotta admit, the Sonic Advance series is pretty damn sweet. Why? It keeps the series at its roots. 2D. And it's fun. And fast. One thing you gotta remember when looking at Advance 3, you can play this game on the can. And since some Sonic games are so fast paced, you can actually beat Dr. Robotnik by the time you're done doing number two. Gross. Number three. The best selling game on the Dreamcast ever! Sonic Adventure was the first real step in bringing the Hedgehog to next gen. It was like a full tech demo for what the DC could do. Compared to most other 3D games in the Sonic series, Sonic Adventure is God. It had silky smooth controls and was fun. So why the hell do new Sonic games not play as well? You know, I don't know. Why can't they make the controls that great with the Sonic games now? They should go back to a decade ago so they can learn how to make the controls better. Team Sonic, I encourage you to do this. It would be awesome. Yeah, go get in that time machine and do that. That'd be great. Number two. Sega is notorious for crazy ass add-ons, and while most of them have failed, like the Sega CD, 32X, this one was actually pretty badass. The Sonic and Knuckles card. The expansion lets you play as Knuckles, so you can fly all around and explore areas that you previously couldn't reach. That's innovation. So why is this badass? Well, it's like having three games in one, with extras. Props to Sega for making cool stuff before we have the ability to download new content with this whole internet fad. Released before Sonic 3, Sonic CD was amazing! We realized we just made fun of the CD add-on, but you know what, there are actually a few good games and Sonic CD was one of the best. It took all the greatest things about Sonic 1 and 2 and gave them upgrades that left us in awe. It has a classic feel with new visuals, some random 2D to 3D environments, great levels, and most of all, it was fun. That's just like Super Paper Mario but 15 years earlier. If there was one Sonic game that we had to play from now until the Blue Hedgehog finally croaks, it would be Sonic CD. So you've seen the best, but what about the worst? There's a lot of them. Which one sucks the most? Let's find out. Number five. Narrowing it down to only five crappy games in the Sonic series was tough, and it came down to 3D Blast and Sonic the Hedgehog for the 360. While both are infamous for their controls, we have to give the nod to 3D Blast. Why? Because at the time it was released, Sonic was so hot! Nowadays, he's on life support. There was once a time when 3D games didn't look like this. It looked like this. Sonic 3D Blast is like a 2D overhead with a bad angle. It just doesn't work. Number four. We all know the 90s were littered with hundreds and hundreds of fighting games. So why not give Sonic one too? Hitting the arcades in 1996, gamers were treated, and we use that term loosely, to a cast of eight characters attempting to save the world. You can beat the entire game by tapping one button over and over again. We can understand trying to capitalize on a fad, but this is just ridiculous. Whippy! Nothing says quarter popping fun like being molested by a green Howard the Duck. Number three. You know what the best way to beat the competition is? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Copy them. Sonic Shuffle was a terrible ripoff of Mario Party. But what it did offer was a massive storyline. That sucked. Number two. Hey, handsome Tom. Yes, Craig. When you think Sonic, what do you think? Hmm. 
The poster boy for dying consoles? Maybe? New. Jackass. Speed! And that's the problem with Sonic Labyrinth for the Game Gear. There was none. Look at Sonic Go! Woo! Now, we did have a ball to roll up into, but that wasn't the point. Throw in broken controls, eh, music, and gameplay that'll make you want to hang a puppy, and you've got one hell of a crappy experience. Warning. Watching the worst Sonic game of all time could lead you into the depths of depression, give you convulsions, or at bare minimum, send you into a blind rage that can only be tempered by playing Super Mario Kart. You have been warned. Number one. Sonic R just plain sucks. There's no redeeming quality about it. Generally, when we talk about a game, we'll lift off some of the bad things, but in Sonic R, the entire game could be filed under absolute suck. This is like a continuous punch to the balls over and over again. No, no, no. Not a punch. One of those little flicks that just barely hits you and hurts you twice as much. Not only will the graphics give you a migraine, what the hell is up with the music? Man, this makes me feel like racing. Dude, just, just, just turn it off. Man, I can't. So I'm turning it off. Just, why is it, just, just turn it off, man. It's not working. Just turn it off. I can't. <laughs> 